Hey, thank you very much. It's been a really fun conference to participate in, to hear everybody's great work. Thanks for the organizers for uh, letting me speak. This is work with uh, John Wetton, who's a student of mine, who's now working in industry. Uh, so Matt shared on Wednesday uh, uh, some data where he was showing that uh, Rust is uh, becoming increasingly popular uh, for um, scientific computing and mentioned that um, the Journal of Open Source Software um, you know, is, is uh, taking papers from all over, including Rust. But it caught my eye that, that um, R is the second most common language used uh, for these uh, publications in this journal. Also, um, R has um, some other journals that um, are oftentimes used to uh, be an outlet for uh, open source software in, in R. Um, so today we're going to be talking about R and CRAN and um, how you can develop packages uh, to be placed on the CRAN repository um, and some of the challenges you might face as you think about developing uh, R packages using Rust. So by way of background, R is an open source language and environment for stat computing and graphics. It's widely used by statisticians, but also data analysts in many uh, fields. It's an interpreted language with uh, a batch mode, um, also with a read line eval print loop, much like you would see in Python. Um, CRAN is the Crates IO equivalent. It's the official repository, but um, it differs from a repositories um, in other languages like Crates.io in Rust, in that it has some strictly enforced rules uh, that is um, uh, also vetted by uh, humans, and you have to make sure that you pass their uh, strict uh, uh, rules uh, to be able to be published on the repository. Uh, as of now, there are about 22,000 packages on, um, on CRAN, and if a package doesn't um, meet the rules, they'll, they'll go ahead and pull it as those rules change over time. Um, 60 percent of the packages on CRAN contain some sort of compiled code for the sake of speed. R itself is an interpreted language and is quite slow, so really it's a wrapper over some low-level um, code that runs much faster. Um, R exposes the C API uh, for package developers, um, but also other languages um, can be used to develop R packages based on some community support, most famously uh, CPP. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, C++. Um, CRAN also, as of last year, officially acknowledges Rust for package development. And there are three uh, Rust-based extension frameworks that one might use. Um, on uh, Yesterday, uh, Mosa talked about the ExtendR framework. Uh, Savvy is another framework that uh, is developed by a, um, a previous developer of ExtendR. I think he still collaborates with them but is trying his own uh, alternative approach. And today I want to talk about Ruxedo, which is uh, my approach. And at the very end, we'll be doing some benchmarks to compare these three different uh, extension packages. All right, so some of the challenges that one might face um, when interfacing R and Rust um, are the fact that um, Rust panics by default uh, would cross a foreign function interface boundary. And so what we do is we do a catch unwind and then provide um, some nice uh, R error uh, with a nice stack uh, trace. Um, likewise, um, if you're using C R's C API, you could potentially um, run into a long jump, which would then lead to a memory leak in Rust. Um, we we solve that by leveraging Rust uh, type system and have a very uh, rich uh, uh, use of Rust type system to provide a nice uh, safe uh, interface over R's C API. Also, R has a garbage collector, uh, whereas Rust has a borrow checker. Uh, we end up then just um, letting uh, R manage the memory, and we hook into R's garbage collector to free uh, memory from Rust. Um, there's also some other smaller rules, um, like packages aren't supposed to download um, uh, during installation, whereas that's by default what CRAN does. Um, also, you're not supposed to leave any artifacts. Well, of course, uh, cargo um, caches things. Uh, and uh, so there's just some things you have to be aware of. And the point is, is that we've addressed these issues to be able to make um, uh, uh, it easy for a developer to develop our packages using Rust. I mentioned a, a robust type system. So everything in, in R 
um, and it's C API that package developers can access is just through a pointer to some obscure uh, uh, type. We don't actually get to um, handle the data except through a pointer to that type. And we represent that in R, uh, sorry, we represent that in Rust as a, a reference to an R object. Um, but you can then um, call different uh, functions, say as scalar, that means treat this as if we're a scalar. And then at that point, you can like get an F64 or an I32. And all these things have um, the ability to uh, return actually um, uh, results. So you can then see if there's been a mistake in that. But you can go for an R object to say a vector. And then from a vector, you can treat it as if it were a F64 or an I32 vector, um, in which case you can get individual elements or you can just get the slice and work with that directly. Um, we have a, an executable that you can install, uh, install uh, cargo install Roxido, and that executable then helps to develop um, packages. Uh, you can then say Roxido new demo if you want to make a new package named demo. And that's going to create a typical directory structure that one would be used to using uh, in R. And it has, say, a description file, which is the equivalent of the um, cargo.toml file in a Rust project. And um, this is all pretty standard. What's, what's interesting down here is that we have embedded uh, this Roxido framework in the source directory of the package. And that's what's going to do all the magic of interfacing R and Rust. Um, we use Just to provide um, some nice recipes, like to make the documentation or to view the API or to install the package. Um, and then you can go ahead and say uh, Roxido build to make a package that's ready to uh, ship off to CRAN, including vendoring all of the um, dependencies. Well, let's take a look just a little bit to get a flavor of how this um, all works in the last uh, three minutes I've got. Um, so this is a, a function using C's, uh, using R's C API to um, convolve two vectors. The point isn't uh, too much, but I want to just um, note a couple of things. One is you always have to be worrying about um, protecting memory from being collected by the garbage collector. And you have to make sure that you match the number of protect calls to the number of, uh, to unprotect here with, with three. Um, it's a little bit clunky. We're assuming that um, things are okay. And if we call any of these uh, API functions and uh, the data type isn't appropriate, we're going to get a long jump in R. So we don't want to do that in Rust. And so we have this nice um, interface that makes this really nice idiomatic um, uh, function that one could call to implement exactly the same functionality, uh, where now the user is passing in a, a slice of F64s. And we get back this nice result. Um, in terms, this is actually um, what the user would write, but this is actually what the compiler sees because of uh, macro expansion. So we have some macros to help facilitate things. And so, for example, A, in fact, is really just a pointer to that obscure um, structure in, in R. But what we can do is we can um, take that structure and see if it's a vector. And if it's not, produce a nice error. We can treat it as an F64. And if not, we can produce a nice error. We can get the slice. All this is generated automatically by the macro. So the user just sees this, but you can actually see what the macro expands to by typing Roxido expand. Um, in the last just few minutes, let me just uh, share a few benchmarks. So this is a, a really simple example where we're going to compute the L2 norm of a vector. And this is only of length one. So it's a very simple example where we just have a very small little uh, vector of length one. And what we see is that the C code uh, is the fastest, but the Roxido code is very, very uh, close in speed. Whereas the um, code for some of the um, other methods is, is also fast. Um, Extend R and Savvy are, are just a little bit slower. So there's a little bit more overhead involved in jumping from R down to um, Rust code. But now, of course, if we have a much bigger vector of, say, a million uh, observations, then, of course, the, the speed is, is completely uh, washed away and um, they're all the same. Likewise, if we could do the convolve function, um, we see that we're as fast as the, the C code, um, and the other methods are a little bit uh, slower. 
Um, if we do a convolve with some longer vectors, well, then at that point, um, we're interesting. We're actually faster than uh, the C code. And I think it's just the difference of the compilers. Uh, ours uses GCC by default, whereas Rust uses LLVM. Anyway, it's been a really fun project to work on, and I welcome any, uh, any uh, discussion or contributions. Thanks for your attention.